What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about the essential bottles that I think you should get if you start a home bar. This is a question that many of you asked me to talk about on the channel. And since we just arrived here in France, I left everything behind and had to restart my home bar from scratch. So I thought it would be the perfect timing today to guide you through this first step. If you guys are ready, let's go spend some money. Let's go. All right, that was fun, expensive, but fun. And that's also one of the reasons I'm making this video. Because when you start a home bar from scratch, there will be a lot of bottles that you will want to buy. And if you make the wrong choices, it can be very deceiving. So in order for this to stay pleasant and efficient, I think a few tips and tricks along the way can be very useful. So hopefully that's the way you will feel about this video. Now, I would like to add a little disclaimer here. Just in case you're not familiar with this channel and to give you a little bit of context, Sephra and I moved from Canada to France about three weeks ago. We're welcomed here by our dear friend in his beautiful home, but it's on the countryside and it's kind of remote. So we had to drive about 45 minutes in order to find a proper liquor store. But it was a really nice one. The selection was really good. But you know, I have my own list of essential bottles and I had to improvise a little bit because not everything on my list was available there. I'm telling you this just for you to understand that by no means, this selection of bottles is the only choices that you can make when it comes to your home bar. It's just the best pick, in my opinion, that I could have made at that liquor store. So with what I'm gonna tell you with the thought process behind my purchase, you should be able to make your own choices according to the availability at your place. That being said, if you guys are ready, let's start and talk a little bit about my favorite category. Let's talk about bourbon. All right, so for the bourbon, one of the most important thing for me is to get one that is at least 100 proof. And no, it is not because I want to get drunk as fast as possible. Let me explain. For example, if you get a bottle of bourbon that is 100 proof, that means 50% of alcohol by volume. So what's the balance? Water. So if you get one that is 40% of alcohol, that means 60% of water. And more water is less flavor. So the higher the ABV, the tastier, the bourbon. And when you mix it into cocktails, you really want the bourbon to stand out. So the high ABV is the best way to make it happen. Second, I really love my bourbon to be spicy. And the best way to make sure it's gonna be spicy is to look at the mash bill. Bourbon is mainly made out of corn, but corn is sweet. So to make sure it's gonna be balanced with a good dose of spiciness, it's to make sure it's gonna have a high rye content. Four Roses single barrel has that. It has the high ABV and the high rye mash bill. So it is perfect for me. Believe me, it is delicious. So speaking about rye, let's talk a little bit about that spirit in the whiskey category. No bottle. I couldn't find any American rye at the liquor store I was at. Can you believe that? This is completely crazy and such a bummer because when you look at all cocktail books with classic recipes, when they ask for an American whiskey, 99% of the time, it's rye. So you need a good rye in your arsenal if you want to make the classic cocktails, but not just for classic. It is just so good. You will use it for modern classic just to sip like that. It is a delicious kind of whiskey. So let's pretend I have a bottle here. If I would be able to include my essential rye bottle to that video, it would be Rittenhouse Rye. It is not expensive, it has a high ABV, it is purely delicious. Let's pretend I have a bottle of Rittenhouse Rye and that would make me very happy. So guys, by the way, if you are in France watching this video and know where I can get a bottle of Rittenhouse Rye, hit me up in the comments. I need one. That being said, let's move on to another whiskey category. We got to talk about scotch. All right, so for the scotch, let me first start with a little warning. This can get out of hands very fast for two main reasons. It is a very wide category. So if you fall in love with it, you will start a collection, I guarantee. And this is when the second problem happens. It gets expensive in a flash. So how can I recommend only one bottle and forget about all the other ones? 
I can't. But what I can tell you is when you start mixing cocktails with scotch, you need a good bottle of blended scotch. It is more affordable most of the time, and it doesn't have that strong, intense flavor signature that most of the single malts have. So it is very easy to mix with. And Monkey Shoulder is exactly that. It is affordable, it is not too intense or too unique in terms of taste, and it goes really well in pretty much all recipes that ask for scotch as a base spirit. So, monkey shoulder it is for my essential scotch bottle in my home bar. Now, let's move out from the whiskeys a little bit and let's bring the rums. Four bottles. I'm sorry, I couldn't pick only one. Because the rum category is very special and it's very complex. There's a lot of different rums and all of them are actually important in the cocktail world. For example, if you like a mojito, this is traditionally made with light white rum. But if you want uh, El Presidente, it's made out of an aged rum, a Mai Tai, a mix of several different kinds of rums. So how can I pick only one? In this case, in contrary to the scotch category, I couldn't pick only one. So I picked four. One of the most important category for me. First one, light white rum. You need one of those to make mojitos, to make daiquiri, to make light, refreshing cocktails. Havana Club for years is my go-to. It is not expensive, it is very tasty, I love it. But if you are in the States and can't get Havana Club, try Plantation Three Stars instead of the Havana Club, you won't be disappointed. Now you will also need an aged rum, and my selected one was Mountgate Black Barrel. It is from Barbados, it is tasty, it is not expensive, it is double matured in old barrels, so it has a very interesting finish. It goes really well in old-fashioned style cocktails or stirred down drinks because of that little uh, whiskey feel. It is really nice, but it also goes really well in other shaken drinks with citruses and juices. So. I highly recommend it. Now, for the two other rums that I brought, I would say these two are very important. You can't barely build a home bar without a light rum and an aged rum. This is an agricole, this is a Jamaican rum. You can get away without them, but they also are so unique in taste. At one point, you will want one, and these two are actually very good. So this is a Jamaican rum. Jamaican rum is mostly for tiki drinks. It has something in the Jamaican rum called the hogo also known as the funk. Because it is made out of a wild fermentation and natural yeast, it developed a lot of funky flavors. And then it is distilled in pot steel, so it has a lot of ester as well. So all these two things together makes of the Jamaican rum something very unique and something extremely tasty. Some Jamaican rums have higher level of ester or funkier taste. I would say the Ampton here is kind of in the medium high range of these two things. It has a high ABV and no sugar added. So I think it makes of this bottle something really worth buying if you want to get only one bottle of Jamaican rum. Then on the other hand, you need also at one point agricole rum. All these three rums are made out of sugar cane juice transformed into molasses, and that's the molasses that is fermented and eventually distilled to make rum. Because it is transformed, it doesn't have the same intensity in terms of grassiness. While the agricole rum is made out of the distillation of purely pressed sugar cane juice. So there's no extra step in the making. It is made out of the fresh, good, grassy sugar cane juice. And it reflects in the bottles. It is very grassy, very, very, very unique. A lot of people will dislike that, but if you want to make a tea punch, for example, don't even think of using these rums. Use an agricole rum. And La Favorite is probably like the most iconic agricole rum. I'm not saying that it is the best one, but it is very nice. It is not too expensive. It has a pretty high ABV. It is 100 proof. So you can use only like a quarter ounce in a tiki drink and you will still taste it a lot. I love it. So if you wrap things up for the rum, I would say one good light rum, Havana Club, three years, my favorite one. A good aged rum, Mountgate Black Barrel is a really nice one. 
and then for the Jamaican rum and La Favorite for the Agricole rum. If you have all these four bottles, you will be able to make pretty much any cocktails that ask for rum, I guarantee. So that's it for rum now. Let's talk a little bit about something that I love. Once again, let's talk about agave spirits. All right, so agave spirit, tequila and mezcal. Should you get one of each? Hmm. That's a good question. I would say if you have to select and pick only one of them two, I would recommend you go for tequila first. There's just more classic recipes with tequila, but if you get into it, you need also a good mezcal because it is so different, so unique and so tasty, you just can't do without it. So here's what I want you to know to make a good selection of tequila and mezcal for your home bar. First, the tequila. There's three different kinds of tequilas. There's the Blanco tequila, Reposado, and Añero. This is the age statement for tequila. Blanco are barely unaged, Reposado are slightly aged, and Añero, a little more aged. So I would say Blanco is mostly for very bright and fresh cocktails, Reposado for sipping and cocktails, and Añero mostly for sipping and a little bit for cocktails. So the one that I picked today is a Reposado tequila. It is good as is, and it goes really well into cocktails as well, both stirred down cocktails or citrusy, refreshing cocktails. One more thing that I love to look for when I buy a bottle of tequila is the single estate mansion. That means that the tequila is made kind of an eco-friendly way because the agave, the plant used to make the tequila takes many years to grow. And the demand right now is so high that if we cut all agave to answer that demand, we will soon run out of tequila and that will be a nightmare. And looking for a single estate mansion on your bottle of tequila and buying only those is the best way to prevent that nightmare. Hmm. Okay, mezcal now, kind of the smoky cousin of tequila. And believe me, it is delicious. So if you get into agave spirit, you need a bottle of mezcal and a good one. I recommend for the first one, you go for a Hoven mezcal, which is barely unaged. So that means grassier and smokier. So today I picked Mezcal Amores, which is 100% Espadi Mezcal, which is the most common agave used to make Mezcal. So that means that you will be able to use that bottle for pretty much any cocktail that asks for Mezcal. Pretty clever, hey? You can thank me later after your fourth Naked and Famous, because you gotta make some Naked and Famous with your bottle of Mezcal. I guarantee. Make up here if you want to know how to make it. So that's it for the Mezcal and tequila. Now let's talk a little bit about Gin. I know. I know. Okay. I know. May seems boring. I picked a bottle of beef eater for my essential bottle of gin in my home bar. But let me explain. There's a lot of different gins out there, different categories. London Dry Gin, American Gin, Plymouth Gin, Old Town, Barrel Aged, and it can get very confusing. But most of the classic recipes will ask for a London Dry Gin. And I believe Beefeater is the quintessential London dry. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for centuries. And on top of that, it is very affordable. So if you use Beefeater in your classic dry martini, Negroni, gin gimlet, you will make outstanding cocktails at a very cheap price. So that's the reason why I think Beefeater is the best bottle you can get for the first bottle of gin in your home bar. And I don't have anything else to say about gin. So now let's move on and talk about cognac. You know, cognac is not the first bottle of spirit that I think of when I think of an essential list of bottles for a home bar. It is not the most affordable one and it's not the most commonly used one either. But on the other hand, there's a lot of classic cocktails that ask for cognac. So at one point, if you want to get into cocktail making at home, I think it is very important to get a bottle of cognac. Today I selected H by Hein, which I believe was perfectly designed to make cocktails with cognac. It is affordable, it is complex. This one is a VSOP, so it has beautiful oak notes, spices, while keeping the beautiful fruit flavors that we love about cognac. So if you want to get into classic cocktails without hurting your wallet too much, H by Hein is a good choice. So that's it for the spirit category, but we still need to talk about the modifiers, which is a very broad category. So we're going to split that into subcategories and we're going to start with the vermouth. 
This is not something that a lot of people will drink as is, but if you get into cocktail making at home, you need to get yourself a good bottle of dry and sweet vermouth. The dry I'm using is Noli Pratt, which is by far my favorite. It is affordable, it is dry, it is complex and herbaceous. I really love it. Then for the sweet vermouth, this is a little more complicated. There's a lot that I love and I like to divide them into two categories, the full bodied sweet vermouth and the lighter ones. The Punte Mes, the one that I have today, is on the full bodied category, in my opinion. And in that same category, there's also the Carpano Antica Formula and the Cocchi di Torino that I really enjoy. If you think you will prefer the lighter style of sweet vermouth, Dolin will be my recommendation. Also, little pro tip, your vermouth, both dry and sweet, once open, keep them in the fridge. It's wine-based, so it's gonna oxidize, but in the fridge, it's gonna oxidize slower. Also, try to consume them within 30 days for the best taste. Now, for the last part of today's video, let's talk about two categories at once, liquors and bitter aperitif. I could have filled up the countertop with liquors and bitter aperitif. There's a myriad of choice out there and many are really good. But at one point, I think we have to limit ourselves, especially when we talk about the essential bottles. So what I did, I thought about the classic cocktail recipes, because I believe if you start a home bar, you will start by making classic cocktails. They're simple, they're good, they've been tested for decades, so I think it is the best thing to start with. So I picked one in each category that I believe will be the one that you will come across the more often. So for the liquor, I picked a triple sec. It's an orange liquor and my favorite one is by far the Cointreau. For the bitter aperitif, I picked Campari. This is a polarizing liquid. A lot of people will love it while the other part of the people will hate it. There's no middle ground. But whether you like it or not, I think you need a bottle of Campari in your home bar because you will come across it so many times. In classic recipes or modern classics, it is very popular. So this wraps things up for today's video, the list of essential bottles for your home bar. I hope you're gonna find it useful. But before I go, I would love to give you one last tip. If you start from scratch, you will realize this can get expensive very fast. So buy only one or two bottles of your favorite spirits, different categories, and then buy a liquor, a vermouth, and an aperitif. That way you will be able with only a few bottles to build several different cocktails. Also, you will realize that liquors, aperitif, and vermouth will spend much slower than the spirits because in the recipe, usually we use only a smaller amount. So it's easier to collect those than the spirits. So once you start to have a nice collection of liquor, aperitif, and vermouth, then you can start to expand on the spirit categories. This would be my best way to build a home bar on a budget. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the like and the bell if you wanna make sure not to miss the next video. Until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and build yourself a beautiful home bar. Cheers.